Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to break the habit of squeezing your thumb and gripping the violin in 28 days using very specific ideas and a schedule of four weeks, seven, 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 and seven days. If you'll do this faithfully for 28 days, you can break this habit. Sometimes the habit of squeezing isn't a big deal and students are able to conquer it, but nine out of 10 times, it's a huge problem. It's a stubborn habit that's hard to break and I have to halt everything on my students to really stamp it out and get rid of it. So that's why we, we wanna do it. We wanna do it in 28 days and we don't want to make it last any longer than that. Okay, so I'm going to give you five specific ideas and or exercises or assignments and you're gonna do them for 28 days but you're only going to apply them to simple stuff as I'm going to direct you to do and you can copy from the video description below I will write it all out for you I want you to copy and paste it and print it and if you're gonna try this 28 day challenge put it on your music stand and follow it religiously okay so the five ideas first before I tell you the schedule the five ideas is number one you gotta make sure that there's not something causing your left hand to squeeze meaning is your setup adequate does your sh uh, chin rest do its job does your shoulder rest do its job are you able to let go and feel like the violin is not going to fall those of you who do not play with a shoulder rest or who are opposed to a shoulder rest, that's fine. I just can't help you. You've gotta make sure that your left hand isn't unfairly burdened with supporting a violin that should be supported other ways. So that's your first assignment, and that's not something you're gonna practice every day. It's something you need to investigate and get to the bottom of. Number two, here's an exercise that you're going to do. I call it the thumbless torture, and that is where you play with your thumb away from the neck. It's, it, it, it does um, degrade our tone because we don't quite get the contact that we need, but it can be done and I want you to do it every day for 28 days, okay? So that's called the thumbless torture. Number three is to play with your scroll pinned against a wall. So the wall is supporting your violin and that should be a big hint for you. If, if you feel great when your scroll is pinned against the wall and not great when it's not, that should tell you that there's a support issue and you might need to look at your, your setup. Okay, so you get a sponge or a dog toy. Here we go, this will do. And you put it, on the end of your scroll so that your scroll doesn't slip and slide and go shooting off the wall. And you will pretend, pretend the wall is here, okay? And you'll just, you'll pin it against the wall and then you will play with your thumb absolutely. It can contact the neck. So this is not the thumbless torture, but you need to have 100% of your focus on your thumb. If you feel any pressure, you need to back off and start again. Remember, this is what your whole entire focus is for 28 days. That's number three, pinning your scroll to the wall and your thumb should be a feather thumb. I'm just barely allowing you to touch the neck. Number four is what I call thumb pop quizzes. I hated pop quizzes in high school. You set a timer for every one, two or three minutes, whichever interval you want and when the timer goes off, you're gonna check your thumb and see if it's guilty of any kind of squeezing, any kind of pressure besides featherweight. Okay, so thumb pop quizzes. Number five is not an exercise, it's a concept, and I want you to internalize this concept and ponder it. It's called, I, I've called it the oblique lift, and I'm not the only one who's talking about this, but the oblique lift. I, I drew a, a little picture for you. It's the concept of using passive surface friction to help lift the violin or to help maintain contact 
and a little bit of oppositional force for those downward pressing fingers, you're using passive surface friction from the thumb. And let me just show you what this looks like. So if this is the shape of your violin neck, right? Then your thumb contacts the neck on the lower oblique corner about where uh, five or seven is on your clock. And the, the, just the moisture on your skin grabs that and it just naturally produces a supportive rising effect on the violin that gives you all of the oppositional force that you need for good left hand for the downward pressing fingers. Just feel it. You feel that thumb on the lower, lower oblique um, scoop of the neck. And it can still be a feather thumb. You are not squeezing. You're not using this muscle at all. It's passive. And it's very freeing when you can learn that. Okay, so work on that concept. Now let's talk about the schedule. So for days one through seven, you're grounded. Like I said, you only get to play tetra chords. And at first, you don't even get to play all four fingers. You will play open, one, open, one. And you'll do it using the thumbless torture. You'll do it using your, your dog toy and pinning the scroll to the wall, using a feather thumb, right? When you pin the scroll to the wall, you do get to touch the side of the neck, but only for a feather weight, only as light as a feather. And you're going to give yourself thumb pop quizzes. So set the alarm at whatever interval you want and check yourself. You can start with open one, open one, open one on all four strings. Then you can graduate to open one, two, one, open. And when you're, you've mastered that and you're passing all your pop quizzes and you feel like you've got a feather thumb, then you can go open one, two, three, two, one, open. On all four strings and use your pin the scroll to the wall and pop quizzes, okay? And then you can finally go open one, two, three, four, three, two, one, open. So the full tetra chord. And if you do really well at that, you can switch tetra chords. So you're playing the low two tetra chord. Or the high three tetra chord. Or the all whole steps. Okay, I have a whole nother video that tells all about the tetra chords. So if that confuses you, please find that video and it will answer your questions. Okay, so that's for the first seven days. The next seven days, you're allowed to use a one octave scale. So go ahead and let this be your review for your all your major keys, all your minor keys. You can do harmonic minor, melodic minor, whatever you're up to, do it. And you can go faster if you're able to, and if you're maintaining control over that thumb and keeping him as light as a feather. That's days eight through 14. Days 15 through 21, you can play simple tunes, your easy tunes that are two full grades below where you're at currently. So if you're in Suzuki book four, play songs from Suzuki book one and two. Or, so, you know, just two full grades below your current level. 100% of your focus is on relaxing that thumb and not squeezing. Finally, the last seven days, you're allowed to add some vibrato if you are to the point of doing vibrato. If you're not, then you don't have to do that. You can add vibrato and you can start stepping up into your harder repertoire into stuff that requires shifts, into faster moving repertoire, maybe some spiccato stuff. Um, so you can start testing yourself and see if you're ready for re-entry into regular violin world. Okay, 
28 days of focused work will help you get rid of this stubborn habit. And I think in many cases, that's the only way to do it, is to just clear your table and focus just on that. And it's worth it too. If you can do, if you can accomplish that and break that habit, it will pay you back big time for your efforts. All right. So I welcome you to take this challenge, print out the information out of the description box below if you need it. And good luck. Keep me posted. I'd love a comment down below on what you discovered with this challenge. See you in the next video.